Today really was an awesome leg day. It was awesome gym, awesome equipment, felt good. I and mean, I killed it, so can't ask for much more than that. They don't have legs. It's just a bunch of uh, bricks. <laughs> What's going on guys? Um, training quads and calves at Fox Fitness today and the workout for today is all the machines. We don't have a gym like this back in Houston with all the arsenal stuff so definitely want to use their hack, definitely want to use their power squat, and definitely want to use their leg press or their vertical leg press so probably do like one or two working sets of machine and just move on so it'll be some good variety today looking forward to it. Woke oh. up shredded today too, so that's always a good feeling. Right, today is Tuesday. It's our quad dominant leg day. We are going to use all the arsenal strength stuff that we don't have. So I'm pretty psyched about that. They're looking on point for where they're at. Hunter's under close to four and a half weeks out and, and Brian's about eight, eight and a half weeks out now. They're just, they're gonna be on point and it's just gonna be a scary thing. Like, that's what I'm saying. If you're working with some guys that know what they're doing, you don't have to worry about them outside of the gym or inside or outside of the gym, honestly. Wanted to dive into and get a little uh, more technical and in-depth than normal about what we did for uh, legs today. So um, we've instructed till we're blue in the face on calves, so if you want ins calf instruction, go search and you'll find it. The first exercise, the uh, one-legged leg extension. Um, Brian and I both have started doing pretty much all of our extensions exclusively unilaterally, meaning one leg at a time. Um, for a couple reasons. Um, first off is I feel like once you get like to a certain size, like him and I passed that a while ago, your adductors get developed enough to where you can't keep everything in a straight line because everything that we're focused on is a maximum contraction and the way you get a maximum contraction in a muscle is lining the joints up and allowing you to squeeze as much as possible. So whenever you're sitting here and like you're able, not able to keep your legs in a straight line and at the bottom they're getting like that, you're losing tension on what we're trying to train. So by training them unilaterally one side at a time, we're able to actually, you'll see us in the video, keep one leg out and actually rotate the hip to where we have the ankle, the knee, and the hip all in a straight line. And we're able to really keep our hips pulled into the bench. So that's the other thing besides keeping everything in a straight line and really focusing on driving the back of your knee into the pad. Your quad's a knee um, flexor, so you just want to drive the back of your knee into the pad. Besides that, you really want to focus on pulling your hips in because anytime you're like this and your hips coming up, you're losing tension on your quads, specifically your rectus femoris. Little known fact, the seat, uh, extension is the only uh, exercise that will like, fully contract your rectus femoris because it actually ties in across your hips, so do your leg extensions right. Uh, moving on from there, we went to uh, some leg press. And, yeah. uh, Brand new Arsenal leg like press. It was excellent. It has a big platform. It was super smooth. <laughs> like smooth as butter to the point where it's like we were like kind of laughing about how much weight we could do because it's just the weight and not all the resistance from the bearings being shitty or rust or whatever. Rust, yeah. else. <laughs> so, <laughs> that was a weird, we usually, was a weird feeling. That we usually deal with. <laughs> we have a really good leg press at our gym. It's just it needs a little bit of maintenance. So yeah. And, so uh, for the leg press. Um, so I get him and I really been focusing on them because we'll do leg press both on our hamstring day and our quads day. So 
Hamtrain's day where obviously, you know, your feet pretty high and pretty ducked stands, concentrating on driving through our heel, using our glute and hamstrings as much as possible. But on quad day, we've really been focusing on keeping our stance more narrow, so like about shoulder width, like what you'd squat with if you're using like traditional, like more like bodybuilding squat, not a powerlifting squat. So like shoulderish width and then slightly duck toed. And then keeping our feet as low on the platform as possible when, while at the bottom of the rep, we're still able to drive from our whole foot. Whenever you're training your quad, it's okay to drive from like the ball of your foot some. You just don't wanna have your feet so low that like your heels coming off the ground to get the full stretch. So feet as low as possible while still able to drive from your entire foot is what we've really been focusing on uh, with leg press as far as like form and leg position. And then um, when we're actually initiating the rep, what we really try to focus on is not like pushing the weight up and down as much as driving our hips down and back into the bench and then focusing solely on the function of the quad, which is knee flexion. So, you know, you're really getting the full stretch at the bottom and then really focusing on extending the leg just shy of lockout at the top of every rep. And uh, the lighter sets we did in a more like continuous pump style, but you'll see the heaviest set we did, we yeah, really yeah. slow and yeah. controlled and made every inch count. So really, you know, five, six second descent on those to really get the correct contraction out of it. So, cause it's easy just to pump it out, but yeah. it's, that's not what you're going like, for. Like we both probably could have done that weight 20 times if we were going for like reps and nothing else and still, you know, we would have hit that and we would have hit the right amount of extension, but they also have been a lot faster and sloppier, so the weight's a tool. It's how you use it. <laughs> what is the you have to win by two rule? So Brian and I train together every single day. Brian and I are lucky enough that we're both like equally like fucked in the head when it comes to how hard we like to push ourselves. And at the same time, we're like right around here, strength-wise on most things. His back's a little stronger than mine. I press more than him some days when I'm feeling good. But for the most part, we're like right here. So Especially on legs, it's even. Legs yeah. is dead even, so it's awesome. So right now, since I'm getting close to the show, um, I've led the last two weeks. Today was his turn to lead. Yeah. And whenever you're leading on those working sets, you take them to absolute failure, right? Well. Having a number to shoot for is an unfair advantage being the second person that's going. So, Brian today for his leg press, all out set with like 14, 15, 16, however many plates it was on there, did 10. So, for me to actually win and it not just be a tie, I had to get 12. That's like the second mover advantage, you know? You know what you gotta do, so you gotta do it big and get, get two more for it to count. And then by then we were really warmed up, so we did hack squats. Warm, yeah, yeah, warm, warmed up. <laughs> I couldn't bend my leg by then. Right. But. So we only did two sets of hack squats. We did one set to see. It was almost like a feel. Two plates was pretty heavy. You don't have to worry about them training their ass off, training hard. They train hard every day, and I, I'm just there for the ride, you know, just enjoying it. But if I can help like just a little bit in the gym like tell them to flex harder on the way down keep it yeah, flexing. That's a great yeah. cue for flexing the head, but, flexing yeah. on the way up keep their their muscles contracted the whole time then that's that's better for all of us you know it's just if i can make them better by like one percent that's that's good enough for me. yeah he had a cue where he said flex your quads the the entire downward portion of the hack squat that's the best the hacks ever felt yeah i really focus on yeah. driving your yeah, you, knee forward and the tension in your quad yeah you really gotta you'll see me i got a little frustrated with them for a second like 
Do you mean squeeze it like, yeah, yeah. a couple of reps through my set and you mm -hmm. see like a light bulb went off and I yeah. don't know if it'll be on camera but yeah. like my leg looks like it's being used a lot more like it's firing yeah. and there's more veins and stuff. It's most it's mostly you really flex the knee. Knee flexion, like just well, flex. Yeah, it's a function of quad yeah. hamstring, right? Yeah, knee yeah. flexion mm -hmm. retention. So. Yeah. Brian was like around nine or ten reps and it was looking pretty heavy and I was like, you know what, this is the set. So, uh, like, oh, we got five or six. Yeah, we definitely train, train by feel, obviously. So, like, usually, I mean, in our heads, we were probably planning on doing three, but, you know, with how he was looking and what we had done before, knowing what we wanted to do after was the big thing because we did a little bit more than normal today, four exercises instead of usually three. Initiate with the knee, initiate with the knee. So like whenever you're initiating a squatting motion, whenever you initiate with the knee, you use as much quad focus as possible. It's whenever you break at the hips and start by reaching your hips back, it's more glute and hamstring dominant. So on your quad days, really focus on, you know, like driving the knee forward. That whole taboo thing about your knees shouldn't be out over your toes is absolute bullshit. Sorry if you don't agree, but it is. Your knee being out over your toe allows you to get a maximum stretch in your quad. The big thing is, like I touched before, is not getting out so far over your toes you can't drive for your whole foot. Because once you are up on your toes, um, that's not a ideal position unless you're trying to do it like for a sissy squat or something. So, and then, uh, so last exercise um, was one that we saw uh, Jordan Peters do, trained by JP on Instagram. He's Awesome. Uh, I agree with a lot of his principles, and I've gotten some good stuff with him for, from him for sure. So, did those banded sissy squats. Uh, it's a great finisher, especially when done right. I know we keep on saying like you got to do them right, but don't do something if you're not going to do it right. right? That's everything in life, not just in the gym. But uh, so, what is doing a banded sissy squat right look like? So, big chest flat back and then when you initiate the motion you want to do it by you know like I said reaching forward with your knees and then getting your hips back as far as possible. Your goal is to stretch the quad as much as possible and keep as much tension on it as possible. Out of the hole um, what you want to focus on is bringing your hips forward and then driving your knee back. So you can stand up and almost drive from your heel and you could really probably feel it a lot in your, in your hamstring and glute. Whenever you do it that way, like you're keeping a lot of pressure on the front of your shin and really focusing on standing up by driving your hips forward and your knee back. It's a really awesome uh, squeeze in your quad. Any and then yeah. also flexing your quad at the knee, the whole motion mm -hmm. on the way down and the way up. So. Same cue for the hacks like, like Andrew showed us. So. All right, guys. Well, um, I know we say this every single episode, but uh, thank you so much for following along with this and kind of providing us with some interaction and feedback. Uh, makes it a lot more enjoyable knowing that uh, people are following along. And you know, it makes my day when I have someone saying like, "Oh, I watch them when I'm on the stairs prepping for my show or this or that." So that's really cool. Thank you for following along so far. Um, Another thing, um, probably next episode we do will be the next Q&A, so we'll take the questions from like the last three episodes and answer all the highlight ones. Um, so be sure if you have any questions you want to ask us regarding nutrition, diet, or supplementation, put them in the comments of this video and we'll do our best to answer them. Just letting y'all know the questions that are probably going to get answered and the more broader philosophical ones, not how much should I eat if I'm 5'7", 145 pounds and want to gain 15 pounds of muscle and which exercises are the best for this, this, and this. <laughs> probably not going to get answered. You know, if you want to know more like the philosophy behind training or nutrition, is that ask questions like that because it gives us something to talk about. Disclaimer over. Anyways, him and I are about to hop in uh, the car and try and drive back to Houston without having catastrophic cramps, not making any promises. But uh, yeah, we'll catch up with y'all sooner than later. I'll be probably three weeks out next time y'all see me and he'll be seven, so bring on the shreds. Yep. <laughs> see ya. Peace out. Later.